Hello, Basehead family. Uh, today I want to talk about car audio charging, as far as like what system options you have, and especially I really want to focus on um, talking about new cars. New cars, their electrical systems are so sensitive. It is crazy. And uh, what are Baseheads supposed to do in those type of scenarios? In fact, I, I, I've often talked about my issues. I, I haven't specifically addressed what sort of issues I have with my car and charging, but uh, I, I have them, and so I have looked at other options pretty extensively. And so, one is the traditional method. So, you you upgrade your alternator, and then you put a big lithium battery in the back next to your amp. This is a, a JY80 amp hour battery. This was $2,500 retail when it came out a few years ago very expensive it was meant to charge i don't remember the exact specs maybe like a 5k system on its own without charging and then depending on how much charging you had it can maybe do 12 to 16 thousand um beyond that and i found that uh, i i had purchased a high alternator 220 amp ah i really second guess that it's 220 amp i the most i've ever clamped Going back to the system was just under 100 amps. It's about 98, 97 amps. Um, anyways, uh, this is the same uh, lithium charging. Um, sorry, the same chemistry as a headway battery bank. And in fact, if you want me to open up, I, I can open it up. So the idea is that this could quickly discharge, and it, it can. It can very quickly discharge, but it's discharging at 13.3 uh, volts. This might actually be the first. I've never seen the guts on this shown online. My buddy and I went ahead and opened this up after I, I used it for a couple of years. And, and no, I did not buy this new. I was lucky enough to buy this off of someone. Looks like I need a screwdriver to open this up. It's very tight. Oh, it's coming. Hold on. Whew. Ah, I got it. All right, there we go. First time, take a look inside. These are this. <laughs> this is their bus bars. Which is completely hilarious because these are are so thin. Each bus bar is is very thin, and people always talk about how you need really thick bus bars to provide the system with power. So considering how thin these, I mean, you can see these flex. They are not. Let me see if I can aim up the camera. They are not that thick. Anyways. I found this is probably uh, less than a, you know, a 10k solution easily. This this would be good for like a a 5k with a good two 300 amp alt. That's a traditional system though, right? And newer systems are so finicky. Uh, you try to you try to wire this in and put a high alternator uh, amp in, and you are you're damaging car components, and you're paying for um, computer chips and stuff to get replaced. It's it's pretty ridiculous. And some of you have probably experienced that and went, oh, geez, I, I guess I just can't have a system anymore. Some of you probably experienced that and tried to went, well, what else can I do? So I'm going to share the next option. Move this aside. And let me go over and look on the website real quick. Give me a second. Okay, so this was from an admin of a Blackout powered or blackout power which is a facebook group but also he that i think that's the name of his product and he sells something that basically is a, a dc to dc converter and it ups the voltage so a, a dc step up voltage to dc and you can input 12 volts or 11 volts or whatever and it's adjustable <clears throat> where you can set how much voltage you want to charge. So you can say, I want to charge 15 volts or whatever. And he sold two, in fact, let me read this. Um, any alternator and strongish. So they're, I think they're from uh, India. 
Front battery, front to back zero gauge wire goes into the booster. Input plus, give booster an eight gauge ground. Output for booster will have higher voltage than that you can adjust. Connect the positive to whatever battery you want to charge. Uh, you can charge LTO batteries at 15S range of voltage or NMC batteries, which take up to 16.5 volts. Life PO4 batteries take up to 14.7 volts. Put a switch on the booster uh, remote wire so you can turn it on and off whenever you want. So essentially, it, and oh, right here, here's the important part. When the booster is off, it acts as an insulator separating the front electrical system, battery and alternator from the back electrical system, amplifiers and audio battery. So you're basically creating a completely separate electrical system for your car audio, which maybe is what we need to do in the future as we move forward. I don't know. Just a, a, an idea or a suggestion. Maybe people are already trying something like this, and I'm not specifically suggesting this item. But I do know that there are DC to DC converters out there, and there are ones that are at high amperage, and I think something like this might work really well for a car audio system. And obviously someone's thought of it, and they've you know made a product out of this, and there are probably other products like this. If you are aware of any, please post them down in the comments, because I am actually interested in something like this for my, my system as well. So anyways, booster input voltage can be from 10 to 15 volts. An output could be from 14.5 to 18 volts adjustable. Booster 1.5K draws about 120 amps continuous. Booster 1K draws about 85 amps continuous. Efficiency is 82%. So if you had that 120 amp, and it's it's drawing 120 amps, and, and you're at, oh, geez, let's say 12.5 volts, because you're really sucking it out of your amp, and you are boosting up to 14.5 volts, then you already lose, uh, what, about 15%? And then efficiency is 92%, so you lose another 8% or so. So you're losing almost uh, about 25% of the amps. So if you're pushing at 120 amps, you're actually only coming out 90 to 95 amps um, coming out, which is still not bad if you're you know upping the voltage. And like I said, I don't know how well this product itself works. I'm not advocating for this product. But I do see the benefits of this type of product where you're completely basically making a separate electrical system for the front and back of the car. And I know people do this and they have great success with it. And you use something like that with, uh, once again, the battery, kind of like a battery I showed you before or whatever lithium battery or maybe AGM battery that you're interested in. And uh, it's a it's a really good idea. Anyways, let me go on. I want to talk about one other potential electrical charging option okay we're back to the camera again and i'm gonna move this battery out of the way the last option that i consider i strongly actually give a lot of uh, consideration to is something like this okay now this battery specifically is a home-built battery that i had made with a buddy i'll pull the lid off and then this just helps the batteries from touching the top of the lid this is uh, Life PO4, so same exact chemistry as the headway and the other battery I showed you. This is um, these are EU cells. Each one of these is a cell. They're pretty big, just because I have a lot of extra space between this and the top. And uh, also over here, I've got the controller over here on the side, and I wanted to leave a lot of extra space just for cooling for this battery. Um, but you could probably do something that's plastic that would get pretty small. It would actually be smaller than the JY battery that I showed you. Um, and it, it would, it, it's probably lighter. Just these cells by themselves are, are definitely lighter. And these, um, I don't know if you can see these, oh, my finger's in the way, but these jumpers, I'm actually using, oh, I'm trying to get out of my way. All right. I'm actually using two stacked. You could stack as many as you want. You could do three, four, five, six. So, so those people that are worried about the bus bars being too small, you could stack as many as you want. Now, the biggest problem is the C rating, right? That's Everyone automatically goes, well, can I mean, can it put out massive power like the JY battery or other potential lithium options? And um, believe it or not, this one battery, which I had spent about $450 on the cells for, uh, is rated 230 amp with a C rating of one continuous and two burst. 
So one of these batteries, which is, um, what, a fifth of the price of one of these JY batteries, can do like a third of what one of these JY batteries can do, continuous. And these are rated for, you know, uh, 230 amp hours, versus the JY is only 80 amp hours. So, I mean, two of these would be 460 amp hours. That'd be like a 400... A 4,500 watt RMS um, amplifier. And, you know, those amplifiers are not con doing that continuous. So you, you might even be able to step up and do, like, um, an 8K amp on something like two of these. And these are for solar. Now, I don't know. The, the battery, the, the voltage drop might be quite significant. But, but this is a 4S, so that means there's four batteries in series if you did an extra battery here i think it'd be so this is 13.3 nominal voltage an extra battery would be um i think it's 16.6 but correct me if i'm wrong down in the comments i mean most lithium batteries have to be charged to their nominal voltage but life po does not so you could charge this to 15 and a half volts and you wouldn't even need a separate charger. Literally, you could go home at night, plug this in, charge it 15 half volts, and you get an hour of 230 amp continuous, which is a 2500 watt amp. And a 2500 watt amp, remember, on base, is just, it's, 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 right? It's not continuous. So you might get three hours out of something like this. Uh, now you're going to have some voltage drop over time. So let's say an hour and a half. That's a 45 minute commute there, 45 minute commute home and then you plug it back in or you get you get a few of these and you run like four and a, a, a four or five s configuration depending on if you want 13.3 or 16.6 or, uh, or somewhere in between and then you've got i mean f oh geez four of these uh 230s uh 460 900 and was that 20 920 amps continuous that's a 10k amp off of four of these running it for like an hour and a half and that's literally not even you're, you're not spending money into getting an extra alternator you're not spending run, money running wire to the front and back you're not spending money um trying to figure out any of your electrical issues you, you just spend two grand you get a bunch of these cells you build a really cool, awesome bank in the back of your car, and you charge it at home. Or you could use one of those step-up DC converters that could maybe maybe use something that's like a 50 amp. That would just slow trickle charge it. So if you're driving four hours to the nearest bass competition with the music off, the thing will be you know pretty pretty charged by the time you get there. Anyways, I I don't know why, and I have seen vehicles use this. I saw a vehicle uh, posted online from Europe do a system like this where they just built a huge bank that had a big capacity that they literally could just charge at home and they could play for hours at the competition. Now, I know there's a little bit of a weight issue. Uh, I think you could probably get by with maybe doubling this battery size for the same size as this JY battery or for the same weight uh, as long as you did some sort of plastic container that it sat in. But it's it's something that maybe you know us base heads should start talking about. Some of these solar batteries are you know um, decently built to run ACs out in the wild. <laughs> so if you got four of these, that's nine hundred and twenty amps continuous. It's almost two thousand amps burst. So think about that. That is wild, and I have seen. Some massive headway banks that are way bigger than just four of these. Way bigger than five. Way bigger than, you know, 30, 40 of these. I've seen some huge. And those are, uh, effectively, those might have four times the burst power. Uh, or maybe four times the continuous power. But they're also the same size. And they also have a fraction of the amp hour. They might have a fourth of the amp hour. So maybe it's time we start talking about this kind of thing as a community of actually just creating a pretty good um, bank. Also, if, if you wanted to, you could go get a 14-volt like AGM deep cycle from maybe a 
local battery place that does refurbished batteries or used batteries. And you can put a 14 volt and you can do the same thing. You just charge it at home, run your 14, 14 volt down to um, where 50% capacity is with that maybe 12, 12 and a half volts, something like that. I'm not sure you'd have to look that up. Uh, and you, you, you maybe get a couple of those and you do the same thing. And I know they're only good for like, you know, two, 300 charges like that. But that's, geez, that's maybe a, a two, three years, depending upon how much you, you bump your system and how often and how loud. Um, and that would be a, an affordable option if you've got a, a place that does use batteries local. Anyways, guys, I hope this really gives you some ideas. Please post a lot of comments and feedback about what you think about it. Some other options or other ideas as you have them. Like I said, I'm really interested in doing something for my car uh, to, to, to go in. I've already put one help, help put alternator in to go in and do another one. Um, it gets pretty costly, and I'm, I'm at the point now where I just want to look at other options. And I would love to do this. I'm, I'm restricted right now based on weight, but if I could, I would do a, a 5S configuration of probably something like two of these and get a maybe like an 8K amp. Maybe like one of those smart 8K amps and um, just do something stupid and really enjoy it. Uh, I also do competition, which would kind of be awful at competition because I might only get two, you know, two, three hours. So I couldn't, I couldn't demo for people. I'd just be basically running the lanes of it. But uh, either way, let me know what you think. Let me know if this helps. Let me know if this gives you some ideas. Let me know if you've done something like this. I'd really appreciate the feedback. Guys. I love you. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being part of the, the Basehead community. And uh, I will catch you online another night. Cheers.